So remember how I made a collaborative video with Canubis Productions about the real world implications for what happens at the end of Avengers Infinity War? Well, that wasn't my only question about that movie. Today, my friend Milan from the Scienceverse and I will be looking at something a little more furry. Remember that scene in the Avengers movie where Thor swings Rocket Raccoon around in a space pod on the end of a chain in order to generate enough centripetal force to restart the star? Well, over on the Scienceverse, you can learn how to calculate the number of Gs that Rocket experiences in that scene. What I want to know is, could a real raccoon actually survive that amount of force? I couldn't find any numbers on raccoon G-force tolerance specifically, probably because raccoons aren't often used as test animals. However, I was able to find data for a few other kinds kinds of animals, so we can approximate. Frog hoppers are a group of insects that are insanely good at jumping. They move so fast, it's difficult to actually watch them jump with just your eyes. When a frog hopper jumps, it endures an acceleration of around 400 Gs, which is really incredible. However, these insects are specialized to jump that way. For the average insect, like a fly swatted with a newspaper, an acceleration of 200 to 400 Gs is usually already lethal. Even still, these numbers sound very high, probably because insects are so tiny and they're invertebrates, so their bodies are very different from ours. Maybe they're not the best proxies for a raccoon. I found other sources claiming that many birds experience high Gs when they accelerate for takeoff and flying. 10 to 14 Gs sounds a little more reasonable, although since the average raccoon isn't really built for flying, it still might be overambitious. But we have to remember that Rocket isn't a regular raccoon. According to the Marvel movies, Rocket is genetically engineered and has cybernetic implants. Not to mention that he's an experienced space pilot who has probably learned some tricks to survive high G-force loads. So what about humans? A normal person can handle 4 to 5 Gs of vertical acceleration or 6 to 10 Gs of horizontal acceleration depending on the duration. But pilots and others trained to handle high G loads wear special suits and use muscle constriction and breathing exercises to survive more intense Gs. Supposing Rocket had all of these preparations, maybe he could perform as well as the world record holder, John Stapp, who was able to survive 25 Gs of horizontal acceleration. Unfortunately, Stapp's acceleration was for only a little over a second, while Thor was swinging Rocket around for quite a bit longer than that. Still, I think it's safe to say that Rocket could probably survive 10 to 20 Gs of force produced by Thor's swinging. What's that? Milan calculated that Rocket endured approximately 220 Gs? Okay, so this is clearly another case of movie magic, because there's no way a vertebrate animal could survive that many Gs. But what does happen to a body when the G load gets too high? As the oxygenated blood in your body is forced away from your brain, or towards your brain, depending on the kind of acceleration being experienced, weird things start to happen. It's almost like your brain needs oxygen or something. Basically, the symptoms of G-force overload are just the steps to you passing out. At lower levels, Levels, you might experience something called gray out, where your vision loses color, and then tunnel vision, where your peripheral vision disappears and everything feels like it's stretching away from you. At higher levels of Gs, you might experience a blackout of vision while remaining conscious, but if the Gs are too high for too long, you would eventually go through G-lock, which is just a fancy way of saying you'd pass out. And if things are really intense, there's death. At 220 Gs for a minute or more, there's no no way Rocket would have been able to avoid this last step. But how did Milan calculate that Rocket experiences 220 Gs in the scene with Thor and the star? Head on over to the Scienceverse to learn how to perform this calculation. I'm really enjoying doing these science behind the movie videos, and I've got a few more in the works. But if you've got any movies that you think could use some biology or environmental science analysis, please let me know down in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button Button and the bell notification icon. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm also a periodic contributor on the radio show Blue Dot, so you should go check that out as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.